So mm -hmm. I'm very excited to introduce our next performer. Um, I got to meet Kara Foran three years ago when she took a storytelling class with, and I was one of her teachers. And um, from that first class, she was wickedly funny, brilliant, so honest. She reminded me of a younger, taller, whiter version of myself. <laughs> But really, from the first time that I heard her telling stories, I knew that she would become a master at this. And it's no surprise to me that she was one of the top storytellers in 2014. So please welcome the Ohio native, who is much beloved by dogs and bartenders, and happens to be single, yeah. Please welcome, welcome Kara Foran. He had that comb over. 
So I talked a lot about how hot I think bald guys are until he shaved it, because that thing was a crime against humanity. He had been wearing the same glasses for 10 years, so I helped him pick out a new hipster pair, and on and on and on. And this list does not even encompass the very, very nice and life-affirming things I did for him in bed. And on that score, at least, he was properly appreciative, because you see, Adam was recently divorced after a long separation, from the woman he had been with since the first day of his freshman year of college. Uh -huh. And instead of running the other way when I learned that, like a sane person would, I thought, jackpot. No one else even knows this guy is out there. And as soon as I heal him up, as soon as I heal him up, I'm going to marry him. You guys, I want you to really hear me when I say this, because it is not something I say lightly. I would have moved to Alexandria to be with him. <laughs> and I don't even mean Old Town. I mean like godforsaken Kingstown, <laughs> outside of Old <clears throat> But it turns out, it turns out that asking me for stuff wasn't really Adam's strong suit. Take for example the time that I spent months and months helping him study for the bar every night and every weekend. And when he finally passed, I bought him a present, took him out for a steak dinner to celebrate. Fast forward to the next, but when the time came for him to go to the swearing-in ceremony, I asked him if he wanted me to come, he said, oh, you know what, it's not really the kind of thing that people attend. Fair enough. Fast forward to one week later, when we're having one of our regular conversations about reasons Adam feels sad, and he says, oh, you know, it really hurt my feelings that my sister didn't come to my swearing-in ceremony at the bar. I mean, my parents came, and that was cool, but she really should have come too. And I was fucking enraged. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, you have a PhD from MIT. Are you really telling me you don't remember that you lied to me about this last week? As I was pitting the monogram gold tie that I bought you onto you? Seriously? But I stuffed that rage down. Indeed, I comforted him, because gardeners, do not scream at their flowers. <laughs> they just water them a little bit more and fluff their dirt and wait for those blooms to come. I thought that these little bumps in the road were tests, and that if I could be patient and accepting enough, I could pass the test and win the prize. I thought there was no way the universe would make me wait this long for someone who was smart and sexy and weird in all the same ways I'm weird, and then not let me keep him. But I knew that it was going to be up to me to make the next bold move. I was going to say the thing that needed to be said after nearly two years together. It had been bubbling up inside me for so long that saying it out loud was a relief, like confessing your sins to a priest. So one day, I took his face between my hands, and I looked deep into his eyes. Adam, I said, I love you. And he tilted his forehead against me, kissed me, and said, oh, thank you. <laughs> That night, I dreamt that I had a giant, anatomically correct heart tattooed on my chest, and that it was so big and red and glistening that I could never hide it, no matter what I wore or what I did. And I woke up in tears. Now, as a creative person, I was a little bit upset that my subconscious was so very literal about the whole thing. <laughs> but you know, the message was pretty undeniable. And all the time that we were together, we never fought. I'm not a fighter, and so when things got rocky, I would just redouble my efforts to be lovable and to make him feel loved. I always believed, I mean truly believed, deep in my heart that if I could just find the right combination of lingerie, homemade beef stew, blowjobs, and giving him space, I could... I could... <laughs> you guys are dirty. I could find a way to make all the pieces come together and the ultimate puzzle would be revealed. But the day after our I love you, I thank you conversation, Adam broke up with me. Really? You didn't see that coming? He said that he had really, really tried really, really hard to love me, but he just couldn't. You know, like, I was a Billy bookcase from Ikea that he had tried to put together, but ultimately had to toss because he couldn't find the right size Allen wrench. And you know, as grown-ups, we're not supposed to dwell on these breakups like melodramatic teenagers. Old lovers and those whole worlds you create together are just supposed to 
fade out until no one really mentions them anymore, but losing Adam made me remember why I don't fall in love very often because it is so terribly, exquisitely painful when it goes wrong. I felt like I couldn't take a deep breath for months after he left me. I mean, my ribcage ached all the time like my heart had been torn out by the roots. In fact, it was about two years before I really started feeling like myself again. I had just bought a house, and maybe even started maybe even thinking about going on a date again when, out of the blue, one beautiful spring day, I get a notification from LinkedIn that I have a message from Adam. <clears throat> LinkedIn. <laughs> because care.foreign at gmail.com is just so fucking hard to remember. It was a breezy, chatty little email too. Hey, how are you? I see you got a new job. Congratulations. How's your sister? Blah, blah, blah. And as I read it, I could not begin to imagine what he could possibly want from me. I mean, we had been totally out of touch since the breakup. And as far as I was concerned, we always would be. So I did something that I never let myself do, and I Googled him. And that's how I learned that. Less than a year after we broke up, Adam bought a house in Bloomingdale with another woman. Yep. There they were, him and her and the cherry blossoms and her terrible, terrible bangs. <laughs> and this was disturbing on a number of levels. <clears throat> number one, when I met Adam, he could not have found Bloomingdale with a map and a fucking guide. I showed him, I showed him this entire city. Number two, in his online photos, he was wearing those glasses I helped him pick out, and he also had a new beard, and I didn't really need to see that. And number three, looking at the pictures of his new girlfriend, it's really clear that bad bangs can happen to anyone at any time, and that we have to be constantly, constantly on guard. <laughs> but the more I scrolled through the evidence of his new online life, the more it occurred to me that actually I did know what he wanted from me. He wanted me to garden him. He wanted me to fluff his dirt, give him a little water and <clears throat> let him know that I was okay and tell him that he was not a bad person for breaking my heart and then stealing my idea of a happy life and implementing it with someone else. <laughs> so I wrote him back. Um, hey Adam, I guess it's great that you bought a house with a blatantly vanilla woman that you clearly met five minutes after you left me, but I don't really need to know about it, you know? Like, hearing from you doesn't make me happy. It makes me think about all the time I wasted waiting for you to come around while my ovaries were still producing perfectly good eggs. And of all the many, many things I ever wanted to be to you, your LinkedIn pen pal was never on the list, so, so please, please don't contact me again. And I haven't heard from him since.